one of the like paradox of like social media in my opinion is that it was like the idea is to like bring people together right like regardless mm -hmm. of which part of the world you're on you can still communicate with each other you can still mm -hmm. have a video call with each other and still get be connected but it has somehow made us more isolated in a way like we're it, it has become an excuse to not interact with someone personally yeah sometimes right so how can we change that attitude though so I think one, I think it's important to know that there's positives and negatives of social media. Right. So for example, for folks that um, might have been isolated, excuse me, let me just stop my phone from ringing. Um, so you get interrupted a lot too, <laughs> see? That's that's another issue. Like That's why I will never get an Apple yeah. Watch. So you're like in the <laughs> middle of doing something and you get interrupted. Um, that actually affects your, your behavior as well. Um, and many people are studying that right now. Um, but I want to say there are some positives. So, for example, for some people who feel isolated or may feel different, to find other people like them online, um, that can be incredible. And there's been many studies that show that um, if you have certain types of connections and people to talk to online, it can help with your mental health. So that is amazing. Um, and then there are many people that um, have studied social media around isolation. So, for example... You know, a few decades ago, somebody wrote this paper about how being on social media makes you depressed or being online makes you depressed. Mm. Um, but we have to tease that apart a little bit more. And it turns out they did a follow-up paper to that work that found out that not all types of being online are the same. So, for example, if you are, you know, you can consume social media and you can produce social media. They found that people that produce social media um, end up having some better outcomes than people that only consume. Hmm. Um, and so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, and then there's different types of forms of production. Um, you know, this podcast that you're making is one form of production. Um, on Facebook, I can write posts. I can, and, you know, I can try to reach out to audiences. I can start conversations. I can build communities. Um, if I'm, just consuming, and it, and it has this unfortunate derogatory term of lurking, um, you know, that has shown to be very harmful for some people. Um, at the same time, you see people that are extroverted that are a little bit more shy on social media and people that are introverted. Um, sometimes some of them become more extroverted on social media. But this idea of it making us isolated, um, again, depends on the community, depends on the person, depends on so many different factors. Um, I, you know, I have been on social media since, you know, if I exclude the telephone, I think I got my first email account when I was a freshman in college. Mm. Um, and prior to that, I'd been playing with bulletin boards, um, you know, having made my own modem to, to connect to different sites. Um, it's been fascinating to see how it's changed over the years um, from using Usenet. Um, and again, I see one of the biggest changes is speed and scale. Right. Now, to bring that back to your, to your question about being isolated, um, people can feel isolated when things feel overwhelming to them. Mm. Um, people can feel isolated when they, you know, when they become anxious. People can feel isolated during a pandemic like we're experiencing right now when you're kind of forced to have physical isolation and it can sometimes result in some forms of, of virtual isolation. Mm -hmm. um, but this idea really depends, that the concept depends on the person. And it's precisely because of that that I would like to see more tools that actually encourage face-to-face -face contact. So for example, instead of a tool that would tell me when to take my medication every day, um, you know, possibly a tool where I can would remind me to go to a place where I could like meet with people. Um, and I mentioned this because of a study that we did many years ago where I spent some time living in a nursing home, just to give you an example of isolation versus not and how you can right. use technology. So we tried to make the best possible tools so that people could take their medication on time, so that we could get a sense of their vitals, like what their blood pressure was, if their weight was okay, if their heart rate was okay, if they'd fallen. So we went to a nursing home. We put all of the technology in there. Um, and then after after a few weeks, people got used to it. Obviously, it took some time to get everything to work properly. 
Um, some of these older buildings had three feet concrete walls and the Wi-Fi wasn't perfect. And so we, we fixed all of that. And then after, you know, after a significant amount of time of people using the tools, they came to us and they were like, yeah, it works. Um, but we're miserable. I'm like, why? Um, and they're like, well, prior to the technology, every day at noon, we used to wait in line to get our medication. And when we waited in line to get our medication, we would make plans to go for a walk. We would make plans to go to the cinema to see a movie. Or we would say, you know, make plans to cook together or to eat together. By having all of this technology that did everything for them, they never had to leave their rooms. And so 